Wolf 359 by Aaron Vale. Blood brother, come join our pack, share our meat and drink, and rest in the safety of our den this night. I had just stepped into a canteen on Orion Station. I was in uniform, having just walked off the USS Billow Wood after two long months in transit and in dire need of a drink. The greeting, a synthesized voice in standard English, was accompanied by a series of yips, growls, and barks. I looked around for the source. Across the common room, a group of five non-humans shared a table, roughly my height, about fifty kilos heavier, fairly muscular, and rather canine in appearance. Centaurians. I'd learned about them a couple months ago in boot camp, back on Mars. They were friendly, and thankfully had a soft spot for marines. And they wanted me to join them. One of them, a grave-furred, vaguely wolf-like guy, was waving and baring his teeth in what appeared to be a smile. I had mixed feelings about that. Not because of their species, that shit doesn't bother me. No, I was afraid I'd offend them and cause an interstellar incident. That would be the end of my career, before it really even started. Unfortunately, there was no avoiding it, so I smiled, squared my shoulders, approached the table, and introduced myself. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Private First Class James Monroe, United Stars Marine Corps. The wolfman extended a paw. No, it wasn't. It was a six-fingered hand, but with two thumbs. Greetings, James Monroe. I am Arfang L, the Alpha of this pack. If it is convenient, you may call me Fang. Humans sometimes have difficulty pronouncing our names. Again, a series of barks, yips, and growls, with translation provided by a sort of electronic pendant around his neck. I shook his hand, thankful that he was friendly. His grip was strong. Thang pulled out a chair for me and introduced the other four. Unfortunately, I don't remember their names, but they were relatives of his, something like nephews as I understood it. One of the younger centaurans yipped what sounded like a question. His pendant translated, Pack leader, why is it that you claim this human as blood brother when you've never met him before? That was a good question. The non-human sapiens class had only skimmed the surface. Something about a battle at Wolf 359. Let our new packmate order refreshments, and I will explain. He turned to me. Whatever you want, it is on me, as your people say. Okay, I liked this guy already. I ordered a burger and a beer, and settled back to listen. Thirty-six of our years ago. Fifty, as humans reckon. Our family's pack were asteroid miners, in a system we called Garagnag Taral. He looked at me. Your people know it as Wolf 359. Fang took a long pull on whatever he was drinking. I was but a cub, barely old enough to begin education. His eyes, so similar to my own, appeared to focus on a spot about twenty centimeters in front of his muzzle. The station was attacked by a band of human lawbreakers. They landed their two ships on our asteroid and forced their way in. Our people fought back bravely, but we had few soldiers on the station, and they were quickly overwhelmed. Fang took another long pull on his drink. The criminal scum lay to waste the station, taking our people prisoner. They were slavers from the system called Reich. My denmates and I were among the captives. Anger welled up in my heart. Reich had been populated by the last remaining followers of Nazism, a brutal, totalitarian political ideology from Earth's past. Human supremacist, racist, specious, and fascist. They were the worst humanity had to offer. I took a long drink myself. This was going to get dark. A human vessel responded to our distress call, the USS Christopher Kyle. They decanted from Spacefold and dropped Marines like James here. He rested his large hand on my shoulder, looked me in the eye. 
The Marines were outnumbered, but they fought like demons, slaying the slavers by the dozen. The Marines split into three groups. One cleared the station of the criminals, while the other groups fought their way into the enemy ships. As the Marines entered them, the ships lifted off, running toward a jump point. The human warriors overpowered the crews and began transferring us to their own ship. I took another drink. I was beginning to remember this lesson from boot camp, and it wasn't pretty. As my den brother and I boarded the last shuttle, two warships decanted from Spacefold, Nazi frigates from Reich. The Marines did not hesitate to throw themselves into battle against their own species, stalling them as the Kyle ran for the jump point. Those two captured ships were crewed by twenty United Stars Marines, forty men and a pair of lightly armed, unarmored transport vessels, charged into battle against two frigates, knowing it meant their certain death. Fang looked somber. They overloaded their fusion reactors, drove in at full speed, under withering fire, and rammed the frigates. I heard their last transmission over the Kyle's battle network. They said... Are the Centaurans safe? Their captain answered, They are, Lieutenant. Get back here and let's get home. The Lieutenant... He... Fang took a deep breath, let it out, a tear rolling down his muscle. He said, Can't, Captain. We need to keep them busy until you jump. Tell the Centaurans we're honored to have fought along beside them. Tell them we said Semper Fi, Devil Dogs. They rammed the frigates and detonated their reactors on impact. They sacrificed their lives to free us. Fang looked me in the eyes. They would say they were only performing their duty. But no other species in the galaxy has that much honor. That much compassion. He turned back to the pack. That is why we call the United Stars Marines Blood Brothers because of their compassion.